Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They've got a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 800. Is that your final offer, Alison? I'll give you 50 quid more. Make it 100 and we've got a deal. Now, if I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say reject that offer. Gamble. Go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. £600. Today, the show comes to you from Scunthorpe. Just look at the smiling faces. They've been here since early this morning. You know what they want? They want to walk away with the real deal. For the first deal of the day, we fly straight over to Simon Schneider. David and auctioneer Colin Young are close by and keen to see what's coming to land. Now, John, you've brought in this very interesting propeller. What can you tell me about this? Well, I believe it's from a, a gypsy moth, and it belonged to a friend of mine, and uh, it, was, it was originally his stepfather's. I did see it in his house one day and said, well, if ever you decide you want to part with it, to give me the first option, which he did, fortunately. And was that some time ago or fairly no, recently? about a year ago. Right. And what have you done with it since? Have you put it up on the wall at home or tried using it? No, it's, it's, just, it's been at home, just took a lot of space up, really. Because these aeronautical antiques are actually very decorative and they're becoming more and more popular recently as more and more people are sort of collecting more sort of industrial type antiques. So I think this has got appeal on several levels. It's from a gypsy moth. Um, it's got the manufacturer's stamp here on it. And what's also nice to uh, sort of adds to the provenance of it is you've got the original pilot's logbook mm. and the um, original pilot's licence there, haven't you, as well? Mm. So that all helps when you've got something like this. The more information you can provide about it, the more people like. So I think, as I say, it's a nice thing. And did you have to give a lot for it, or is that going to be a secret? Yeah, <laughs> reasonable amount for it, so I should be looking for at least the same back. Right. Well, we'll have to see how we get mm. on, won't we? Right, Colin, it's chocks away. Come on, what do you know, with your experience, about propellers yeah. in the sail room, yeah. and how do you rate that? Condition's great on it. You then look at, is there some history behind it? Is there a little bit of provenance? We've got the books that go with it as well. Um, and then it's going to come down, the value is going to depend on the timing. And you're looking at a period there that is just before the Second World War. Yes. So there's probably not a great story to it. There's just good history to it. And so it'll add value, but not a great deal of value over and above the, yeah. the norm. And what's your estimation? Mid hundreds. We sell quite a few of them, and uh, generally they'll make five, six, maybe seven hundred pounds um, just as pieces on their own. But you've got to add that extra bit of value. So I suppose sort of six to eight hundred pounds. Um, it certainly wouldn't race onto a thousand. Okay. You've heard what Colin says, and you never know on a good day it could bring a bit more. It could fly. But let's see what our dealer from Brighton's got to say about it. I'm going to try and tempt you to sell it to me with some nice £50 notes here. I'm going to offer you 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 pounds. No, I think it's worth more than that. Well, I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's worth a lot more, a bit more? Well, I've got a figure in mind. Which I like to settle for, so it's nowhere near that at the moment. And I mean, it's in good condition, it's got a barometer in it, and possibly I think they're slightly more wanted if they've got clocks in than barometers. But what about if I put down £200 more, making a total of £700? David, we're flying today. So it's chocks away. Okay. Let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say. They're in that six to eight hundred pounds. We've had a few examples on the show. What's nice about this example is you have the pilot's license and you have this logbook here. I think that just gives that, that extra little bit of provenance. It gives it something that you know where it came from, who was involved with this um, amazing you know, piece of machinery, I suppose. If you go to auction, there is a reasonable chance that it could possibly make more, but I can't guarantee that to you. And so what is there is cash, tempting and for sure. John, the £700 there. I think I'll go to auction. 
What about if I tempted you with one more? 750. I don't want you to take an auction, I want you to sell it to me. No. You've got to get like nearing £900 for it now to end up with what's on the table there. I've come in here because I've seen a glint in Simon's eye. He wants to buy it, and why shouldn't he buy it? And at the same time, he needs to make a profit. 750 quid is on the table. You've actually got to make more than 900 to be worthwhile. I'm going to say the boys. Ooh, he's flying. 750 of my hard-earned pounds there, John. I'd hate you to go to auction and end up with less than that. The decision is yours. Mm. OK, deal. It's a deal. Okay. I should be flying Thank home you. tonight. Thank you very Thank much you very for much. coming in Thank today. You. Found out there was 750, which I thought, yeah, it's a fair one. And so I'll be using money for holiday to retire and enjoy. I like the propeller, I think it's a decorative item. All I've got to do now is find my big halls to sell it to. Happy retirement and have a great holiday, John. We're with Alison Chapman. How high will she rate this item, I wonder? So you have brought in a Lalik powder pot. That's right, yeah. How long have you owned it? Um, I've had it about five years. My, my mother had it, um, she was given it in, just after the Second World War. OK. So, what, 1950s? Yes. I would that. think it was about that, too. I, yeah. That's good. Well, Rennie Lalik, he started working, I think it was about 1860, yeah. and he died in 1945. But the factory continued. It's a shame it's not earlier, because the pieces that were made when good old Rennie was still alive, they, yeah. one feels you're buying a bit of him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I do think this is right. after I, yeah, that Yeah, I understand, time. yeah. Yeah. Um, I particularly like about this piece the very Art Nouveau design around the base. I find that very attractive. Yes, it is not. Um, and then her features, there's a little lady on here, isn't there? Yes. Her features are not as strong. Have you noticed that? The... I haven't really looked at it closely. You haven't? <laughs> so you've owned it for five years? Yes. <laughs> So you're parting with this piece? Yes. The only other thing I own of my mother's, because she's not with us anymore, is a ring. And it's too small for my finger, so with the money from this, I'd like to get the ring made to fit me. Right. Let's go for it, then. So, 50. 60. It's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. It's, it's got a chip, you're aware of that, aren't yes. you? Yes, yes, just a little one, yeah. <laughs> so, 60. Mm. 70 pounds. Um, no, I think it's worth a little bit more than that. <laughs> because split the difference, let's call it 75, 75. and that, that is, in my opinion, a fair price for it. If you still want to go to auction to give it a go, that, that's still fine. I think I'd like to try it in auction. If have you, you don't been mind. to auction before? Yes, I have, yeah. Well, then you'll know what to expect and you'll yeah. be able to spend the day with David. OK. <laughs> Good <laughs> Thank luck, you. Julie. Nice to meet Thank you. you. Thank you ever so much, darling. <laughs> Thank you. The Lalique bowl, the problem with that was really the chip. It wasn't valuable enough to have prepared or done. I hope she does well at auction, but I don't think she'll really get much more than what I offered. Here's hoping that chip doesn't put the buyers off. Let's find out as it goes under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young. Now, there's a story with this. Come on, tell yeah. me the story, where it came from. Um, my mother had a boyfriend just after the Second World War, okay. and he brought it back from France as a present. So he was <laughs> trying to woo your mum with was, a uh, yeah. little bit of a Gallic <laughs> charm, uh, a bit of Lalique. Yes. And um, so he gave it to her. Yes. What we want to know is, did she marry him? No, I'm afraid not, no. Oh. She chose my father <laughs> over him. <laughs> OK, so she chose your father. He didn't bring the Lalique, so it just shows you <laughs> people bearing Lalika's gifts don't always get the girl. OK, yeah. you've decided to gamble. The reserve is 100. It's <laughs> going to be a close run thing, so let's see what happens. 50 to go then, surely. 50 pounds, anybody? 50. Starting low. 50, 50. Bit, 5, 60, 5, 75, 80, 5, 90. 5 now. 90 with me at 90 bit. 95, Just 90, the 90, 95, 100, 
110, 120 now. Pass the reserve. 130, commission bidder, 140 now. 140, 150 on the book, 160 on the net, at 160 bid. Oh, one he's one shoot, at one hundred and sixty. boyfriend. Now, at 160, <laughs> last call, done and finished and selling at 160. Gavel's gone down at 160, he probably paid about sixpence in Paris for that, <laughs> just after the war, you know. Okay, 160 pounds, we have some commission to take away, is that 131 pounds. What is your first reaction? Oh, yeah, I think that was really good. Satisfied? Yeah, yes, I think my mum would be happy. £160 under the gavel, take away the commission, £131. Good deal, that, isn't it? That's the real deal. You're not wrong there, David. Will this next lot make David Hateney green with envy? You've brought a very nice uh, set here in. Tell me something about it. Uh, they belong to a great aunt, and um, she left them to my mother, and they've not really done a great deal since. They've just been kept either in a cupboard or in a cabinet, and that's it. Well, first of all, I've got to get 10 out of 10 for condition. It's fantastic. They haven't got broken or chipped. Amazing. They must have been well looked after, because these were made well over 100 years ago. And uh, you'd, first of all, think you'd find a mark on these that would say WMF, which is a well-known factory that produced all this Art Nouveau-type glass with the pewter fittings. So why are you selling them? They don't really go with the style of anything we have in the house, and we've got two small children, and the chances are they may not stay in good condition for much longer. That's right. I mean, if you lost one of these glasses, it would really spoil the value, yeah. and um, if you damage the decanter, well, the majority of the value is gone. Right. It's a lovely set, this. I've not had one exactly the same, I must say. And I've been in the job 40 years, right. so that makes them rare, doesn't it? it if does. I haven't had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd better get some cash out and see if I can tempt you to sell them. Right. I like them. So I'm going to do my best. 50, 100, 150. It's not really enough for me. 200 pounds, Darren. Are we warming up? It's a little cool. Still, I'm just looking for something a little bit more than that. Oh, are we? Well, you brought me something I like here, so I'm going to really try hard. 210, 220. I'm still looking for a little bit more. <laughs> I like this. Mm. <laughs> I think probably it might be Czechoslovakian, but it's those that kind of area, Austria. It's very Art Nouveau. It's very smart. I really do rate it. Now they say three to four hundred pounds, cheapest chips at four hundred quid, really, because that is superb. Right. I better get some more money out here and take these two tenors away. <laughs> two fifty. 300. Not bad. Not bad. With no marks on? No marks at all. <laughs> 350. I'm not trying to buy this cheaply. I think I'll I'll take it. I'm happy with that. OK? Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much for bringing it Thank and you. enjoy the money. Well, I'm very pleased with the, the deal I've got. Um, £350. That's definitely going to go in the bank. It's really good. David's taken to sweet-talking the dealers. He's not a bad lad. He smiles sometimes. But will it get our seller more money? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Scunthorpe. Will Debbie Circle's first lot speak volumes? I bought um, a few books in that uh, was my parents. Um, they've been in the family a long time. Uh, they've got a bit of damage on them, but I'm hoping that somebody will appreciate them. Janice, tell me how you came by these books. I've had them um, since my father passed away um, in 1994, and they've just been stored in the garage in a box. And that's why that one's got a bit damaged, because the water came through the top of the box in the Oh, in what the a room, shame. So. It's time, after 18 years, to have a clear out of all the pots and ornaments I've got of my parents. and. It's a bit of a salutary lesson, really, because um, I imagine that might, too, be the reason that there's a lot of foxing mm. in the books. By foxing, I mean this, you know, this, the this little, little mutt. And you know that that's, that's a fungus. Mm. Um, to me, that, that makes it a big issue. Books have to be in perfect condition to, to reach top money. Yeah. But I do know a nice book when I see one. These are late 19th century, dated 1880. And they are 
the county seats, noblemen and gentlemen of Great Britain and Ireland. They're the kind of the wealth of the time. And these are the big houses, those are the, pr the yeah. property of these wealthy noblemen and gentlemen. Again, from my point of view, in terms of the subject, they're not terribly commercial. It's a very, very specialist market that you're looking at. Um, and bearing in mind the damage, my offer will, will reflect that. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. No, I think I'd like... You'd like a bit more. more? Well, I'm prepared to put a little bit more down, cruel as it may sound. That will... That makes my offer £15 per book. I think they're worth more. OK. I don't think they're worth more. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to increase my offer, but I'm kind of interested to know what you think they might be worth. Do you want to know what other Yeah. 150 yeah, I thought, ish. Right. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Well, you may well get that at auction. I'll go to auction. You'll go to auction. Have you been to auction before? No, I haven't, no. You, so listen, it'll be a day honestly, out. you'll have an interesting day out. It may get, get the spark of interest with yeah. auction going. You never know. Yeah. Um, and I look forward to seeing how you get on. All right, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. So, Janice, you're expecting the top end of the valuation. Fingers crossed for you. It's over to the Duke. I've got Janice here, and this is your sister Marie. Now, on the dealer's day, you brought along six volumes, but what they were, they were the country seats of noblemen and gentlemen. So, they're here in the sale room, the reserve is 80 quid. Now, if we sell this, what are you going to do, you two girls, with the money? Well, we're going out for lunch, so it'll either be a restaurant or a cafe if they don't Okay, sell. so <laughs> depending on what we get, it's either a restaurant for a bit of a posh lunch or yeah. it's a cafe or a pub lunch. <laughs> One of the two, depending on what we get. So yeah. let's see what happens. One, who's going to start me? £100 for them. £100. £80 to go then, surely. £80, anybody? £80. 50 for this set. 50 on bid already. 50 bid. 5, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80. Five now. Eighty pounds. Might be going for five after all. Might be. Bid five now. Eighty-five. Bid ninety. Five. One hundred. One ten. One twenty. One thirty. Forty. One fifty. Fifty. One sixty now. One fifty bid. Is there sixty anywhere else now? One hundred and fifty. It's the last call on my left. Selling at one fifty. Gavel has gone down at a hundred and fifty pounds. There is some deductions to take off. A hundred and twenty-three quid. Now. What's happening with 123 quid? Five-star restaurant. Five-star restaurant? <laughs> you know what? There's room for the Duke of that money as well. <laughs> You're welcome. OK. <laughs> Back in the den with David, and gold is the name of the game. Well, you brought something that's very, very on song at the moment, some gold. Mm, that's so true. tell me something about it. This was bought in Austria. And with this Austrian coin here? Coin there. Yes, it's like the equivalent to half a sovereign, isn't it? But an Austrian one. Uh, and that is half sovereign. That's a half a sovereign. Uh, yes. Gold ingot. And gold these ingot. two nine carat gold. Yeah, these chains are nine carat. I had a quick look. Yes. And the, the mount here is nine carat, That's and this right. mount's nine carat. That's right. And the two coins will probably be, twi well, they are 22 carat mm -hmm. gold. So you've got quite a lot of money's worth here. I hope so. Well, why are you selling these today? Well, we're hoping to move house oh, I see. down south, which is costing more than what we. Uh, it's an expensive job move. moving. It is very expensive. Let me get some cash out and see if I can tempt you, Brenda. Yes, you do that. Well, I need all this. That would be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> is fifty pounds any good? No. no, no, no. Didn't think it would be. No way. Let me make you a proper offer. One hundred. 150, 200 pounds. Am I warming up? A little. More? More. Yes, please. 250, 300 pounds, Brenda. Nearly there. 320. No, a tiny bit more, please. I'm going to give you a proper bid now, Brenda. Though. You are. 340, yes. 360. And another one, please. <laughs> 380. Just another one of those, and then we'll make that a deal. 390. 
Look, that here's some advice. Oops. Well, I've been looking at the paperwork that our independent valuers have put together on this. And if you scrapped that today or took it to a bullion dealer, there's about £425 worth of value. £390 is on the table. I'm going to say to you, he's not a bad lad. He smiles sometimes, especially when he's trying to buy jewellery. I'm going to recommend that. I think it's a fair offer. Thank you very much, Steve. Well, there we are, Brent. You've had some advice from the maestro. It is a good bid. Yes, I think I'll accept your offer. Thank you very much Thank for you. bringing it along, and I hope you enjoy the money. It'll go towards the move. Yes. Thank Every you little very helps, much, doesn't it? It does go a long way. I sat down with David, and I got three hundred and ninety pounds for my gold, and I'm quite happy with it. Had a lovely day. Thank you very much. I think David met his match there. Well done, Brenda. Coming up, Alison's being given a run for her money. So has your mother sent you here with specific instructions? Specific, yeah, I've got a minimum, <laughs> a minimum figure. A minimum figure. Are you going to share that with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Scunthorpe, where the antiques and collectibles are pouring in. We're with Alison, and on her table is a jug depicting controversial South African leader Jan Smuts. And you've brought in... Old Smuts, which is a Dalton yeah. character jug. Tell me about him. How'd you get? Uh, well, it's actually my mum's. I brought it on her behalf. Okay. Um, she used to look after an elderly neighbour, and she gave it to her as a thank you for looking after her. That's and a nice thank you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, my mum's had it probably 20 years, something like that. Just sat right. on the shelf. It's funny because I've seen old Smuts go for like 1,100 pounds in the good old bad old days but he he has halved his value from those times more or less but yes. um he's still holding his own whereas most of the character jugs have just fallen That's on the floor and you can barely give away so you're selling it on behalf of your mother and yep. why does she want to sell it now well, she, now she knows that it's one of the rarer ones she doesn't want to break it <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh uh, i can understand that yeah because i'm i'm a bit risky with china i can tell yeah. you well, I don't really know much about the chap, Field Marshal Right Honourable Smuts, and I should do because I've bought enough of this stuff over the years. But do you know much about him? Why is he so...? I, I don't know a lot, but I do hear he's got a bit of a bad history. Ah. <laughs> uh, so that ah, probably makes him more, the man more with interesting. The past. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and this is interesting, isn't it? Because on the handle, it's sort of got a ram's head. Yeah, yeah, I've no idea what... No, I don't. ...the significance is or... No. But I wonder if the reason that it's popular is perhaps because it yeah. it didn't sell so much. It no, wasn't one of the characters we think, know. I think it's something to do with history put people off once, right. wanting it. But, I, I, you know, that's what I've heard. All right, well, I'll see if I can... Uh, Tempted away from you. Has, so has your mother sent you here with specific instructions? Specific, yeah, yeah. I mean, Are you working on... I've got on a minimum can... figure. A minimum figure. Are <laughs> so you going to share that with me? No. <laughs> and if you don't reach your minimum figure, will you be told off? Uh, well, I'll try and push you past the minimum figure first. <laughs> right, so we've got 100, 200, 300, 400... I would like to push you a little bit further if that's... Because I yeah. will try to buy it off yeah, if it is I can. Yeah, nice, it's very good condition, isn't it? 450. Can I squeeze you a little bit more? What were you if thinking? You uh, a blue one, 20. Would, so, it would seal the deal. What about splitting it at uh, a tenner, 460? You'd be happy with that? I think it's fair, yeah, we'll split you. Split it at 460. Yeah, that, All right, Paul, we've got a deal. Brilliant. Well done, darling. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Got a fair deal. Well pleased with that. Mum's going to be very happy. She'll be putting it towards the holiday now. We're going to take her away. So uh, yeah, very very pleased. Don't really get excited about that sort of Dalton, but there is a profit there, and um, I'm very happy to make a profit if I see it. So Alison's convinced she's going to do well. We'll find out if she's right later. Now Have it's over to off. Simon for an afternoon brew. Carl, you've brought in this lovely little tea caddy. How did that end up in your possession? I can't remember if I got it out of a house clearance or whether I bought it 
in a box at an auction room with a load of silver plate. It was a couple of years ago now, and I sort of put it away, and I knew it was silver. Yeah. It's interesting if it came from an auction, isn't it? Because if it came from an auction in a box of silver plate, basically someone's made a bit of a mistake, yes. haven't they? Because yeah. this stands alone as an item very easily. It's a sort of neoclassical shaped Georgian tea caddy, but this one's a bit later. It's actually made in Chester in 1908, so it's right. a sort of revival, a copy, if you like, of an earlier piece. Um, but it's a very, very nice quality silver tea caddy. And um, if we open it, we can see that it's sort of wet closes like that. It's almost like it's self-closing. That's because it's got a very nice quality, what we call a piano hinge here on the back, right. which is always a nice sign of quality on a piece of silver. Yep. It's a very nice shape, heavy, heavy gauge of silver, yep. nice quality item. So why have you bought it to sell? We're moving in uh, a few weeks' time, so anything towards the, the move and everything? It's quite handy to have something like this that yeah. you can sell to sort of contribute towards the cost. Yeah, and uh, the wife's always happy with a bit of extra money. So. <laughs> <laughs> Find one that isn't. Uh, you're very, very difficult. <laughs> right, well, I like this, and I'd like to buy it from you. Okay. So I'm going to make you a very tempting offer, Carl, so you can say yes, thank you. Right. OK. I would like to offer you 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds? No. No. Are you saying that because you know what the silver value is of it? Yeah, yeah, I've got a good idea of what the silver value is. What's there, 160? Yeah. 200 pounds? It, it's a good bid, but I would love to think I could get the scrap value for it. That's a strong bid. It's, it's a good strong bid, but you must have somebody on your books that would love to own that. Well, I'd love to own it, but I want to try and buy it just under scrap. Yeah. If you can put another £10 down. Let's see if I can find a... I've got a very decrepit, creased £10 note here, but it is real. If I put that down, that makes £210 for the tea caddy. Yeah, Shake that's hands. great. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for coming in, and I hope your move goes very smoothly. Thank you. We're back with Debbie. Will this girly number make its way into her jewellery box? Jill, thanks for coming. Thank you, darling. Hello. Nice to meet you. You Hi. too. And we've had a little chat beforehand. Right. And you have told me that you lost your hearing when you were a child. That's right. Yeah. How old well, were you? Around about eight years old from meningitis. Yeah. It's extraordinary. And you speak so well. So tell me, you've brought this fantastic brooch. How did you come to own it? Well, my mum, she actually fell in love with this in a local antique shop. Right. That she passed every day on her way to work. Over a period of time, she dropped lots of hints about this brooch that she had heard that was in the shop and uh, had it put to one side. So she came back one day and was really furious that somebody had got this brooch and it wasn't her. She <laughs> decided she was going to go and get it because nobody cared about it, no one was it. Anyway. Uh, so, it, by now, you've by actually now got it's it? By now, it's under the counter. Oh. Um, but at that point in time, I was earning a great deal of money and it was a case of sort of taking a few quid in each week and it took me about sort of three or four months to be able to do that. I can't really remember how much it actually cost. So it was sort of a... It became a bit of a, a family story that I wanted yes. about how it appeared on Christmas morning, but obviously she was pleased about it. So she must have been delighted. She was absolutely ecstatic about it, yeah, and she wore it quite a lot as well. So, so after that story, Jill, how can you bear to part with it? Why, why do you want because to? Because it's just one of those things, because it's sort of Edwardian in style, it's not the kind of thing that I would wear. Right. So that's how it is. So what I've done is I've had a look at this with my eyeglass and on the back it's marked very clearly 375, which tells me it's a nine carat gold Right, piece. I understand okay. that, yeah. And it's 10.8 grams. Right. Now, it's set with garnet, which yeah. are semi-precious, redstone. So I'm going to make you an offer, and we'll see how you feel. <laughs> so, 20, 40, 60, I'm not going to mess you around, 80 pounds. No, now, like how do you feel about that? Well, here's David to help us out. Now, I know you're a lip reader, so I'll, come in, yeah. I'll come in this way. 
80 to 120 pounds is the estimation. We're getting up there. We feel perhaps a little bit more. Right. So it would be nice if we could get another 20 pounds. But I'm going, to, I'm going to leave you with this rather generous dealer. Thank you. Thank you for your help. If I put another 20 down, make it 100, do we have a deal? What about a little bit more? <gasps> How about one more five, a five, and that's it. That's me out. Auction or 105? Make it a little bit more than that. Not five, it's redone one first. Well, well, I'm going to give you two fives. 110, have we got a deal? OK. okay. Nice Thanks to meet for you, love, Jill. Thank, Thank you. you. I think I paid a fair price for it, and I think she's got a good price, I've got a good price, and I think everyone's happy. <laughs> Smiles all Thanks. round. Coming up, David and Alison are overwhelmed by this fantastic array of timepieces. What a collection. I'm not sure where to put it, actually. <laughs> Keep watching after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's the final deal of the day, and Alison has her hands full with this lot. With no time to lose, let's see if there's a deal to be had. You have bought me all these wonderful pocket watches. So we've got about, was it 37? Yes. And how many would you say are working? A uh, good two thirds, I would say. So would you say 25 are working? Yes, thereabouts. OK, and we've got some nice watch chains. Yes. Did you collect them? No, uh, my uncle passed away in October 2006 and these were found under the bed, under one of the beds in a uh, plastic container. I never saw him bring them out or anything like that. I never knew he had them. Well, there you go. I think they're just wonderful. I love this watch chain. Um, the problem with the watches are that with the ones that don't work, it has now got so expensive mm -hmm. to get them fixed that really, unless they're gold, they're not viable mm -hmm. because it is such a price. Yes. So we have to be realistic about that, and I will try to be. But I think it's great. I love them. And they look just wonderful here, don't they? They do. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. And all the watch keys. So, right, I better get my cash out then. So why... Um, well, I can see why you're selling them, because there's too many, really. But um, what will you do with the money once you've sold them? Well, I'd like a nice leak bowl, I think. Um, well, that sounds very expensive. Diana, you're a woman with taste, and it's expensive taste. So, 100. I'm not sure where to put it, actually. <laughs> 200. 300. 400. 500. 600. 700. 800. 900. Yes, that is after seven. <laughs> uh, no, you're going to have to put a little bit more down, Alison. A little bit more. Mm, well. It won't buy you a Lalique bowl. We've got a woman that wants a Lalique bowl, oh, David. What a collection. 900 to 1,000. 1,000 to 1,100 is the estimation on this fabulous collection. How much is on the table? I've forgotten. Seven, I think. Seven. 700. OK, <laughs> £700. Pounds. We need to start thinking more towards that 900, that nine to 1100 pounds. Still early days. Listen to what Alison said, and I'll be just over there if you need me. Thank they you, don't David. all work, you know. You need to know the facts. They don't all work. Don't worry about that. The independent valuers and the auctioneer, they say 900 to 1100 They've had a good look at them, and they say they're worth it. They still doesn't work. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if I want to pay 1100 for them. I certainly don't want to pay over a grand. So we've got 700, 800, and that'll be my final offer. So it's 9 to 11 at auction, mm -hmm. and maybe more, because these are attractive to people, aren't they? What you've got here now is 800. If you got £1,000 in the sale room, mm -hmm. you would go away with £850. Yes. yes. Is it worth the gamble for 50 quid when you already have 800 pounds? Perhaps Alison would give another 50 quid, perhaps she wouldn't. So the question is, can we get more? 
there's a possibility. On the other side of the scale, you could come unstuck and not get that. But it's an even playing field and there are lots of people there, so you have to make that decision. I always think it's quite tough when you're that side of the table sometimes. Is that your final offer, Alison? No, I'll give you 50 quid more. Make it 100 and we've got a deal. No, I'll 50 quid and I, I'll deal. And if you don't want to deal at that, then it would be auction. If you can't push, the, push it up to 900, then I'm going to go to auction. I think that the trouble is, there's so many here, I haven't been able to go through each one individually. So I want to stick at my 850. I don't want to fun and burning money. So I guess auction it is. All Thank right, you darling. Then. Thank, Thank you, Alison. Diane surprised me that she didn't take my 850. I thought that was a really keen offer. What can you do? You can but try. So coming up now, Diana, is your collection of watches, of watch chains of keys. You were offered £850 on the day for the total parcel, and you turned that down. Why did you turn down the £850? I thought it was worth more money. We wanted to come to auction for the experience. Okay. <laughs> now, what we've decided to do to give this the best chance, the auctioneer, he's decided to split it into several lots. I think that's the right way to go about it. The first lot is five watches. Three are silver and two are plated. They're all at fault. £30, anybody? 30 30 in bid at 30 bid 5, now making it at 35 bid 40, 40 bid 5, 45, 45, 50, 50 bid 5, 55 bid at 55 bid 60 now, surely. £60 bid, net bidder takes it at 60. Are we all done? Going this time then at £60. £60 is the first lot. The keys were up next and fetched a modest £42. The Albert chains also sold, making the total so far £242. And we go to the next lot which is four pocket watches. 120 now on the net. 120, surely. No, 110, 120, 130. 120, 130. Now. They've passed the reserve. 140, 150, 160 now. 160, 160, surely. 150 bid. Is there 60 as the last call then going at 150 pounds? Thank I you. make that 392, 392 so far. We now go to a lot here, a collection of 15 Victorian and later silver cased open faced pocket watches. 170, 180, 190, 200, 20, 240, 260, 280, 300. They've passed the reserve of 280. 320, 340. Creeping along nicely. 380, 400 now. 400 bid, 20. Slowly, 40, slowly, catchy monkey, bid. as they say. And we will sell in the room at 420. I make that £812 so far, and we are now going in with another lot. Lot number 240E is a collection of 15, and these are even better than the last lot. £300 bid, 300, 320 next, 320, 340, 360, 380, 400, 420, 440. 460 now. You turn down 850. We're already 812 and we're going in with this lot. 520, 540, 560, 580, 600, 620 now. 620 again now at 600. Are we all done? Going then and selling at 600 pounds. Not 600 pounds. That was the final lot. Wow. <laughs> so we have now 1412 pounds in total. And we have some commission to take away. And that's going to leave you with £1,158. Now, what's your first reaction? Well, I would say thank you, Uncle John, and thank you very much for the experience. It's been fabulous. OK. And you're happy with the price? I'm really happy, yeah. OK. So, on the day, £1,158, tick-tock, and the watches weren't even ticking and talking, were they? Half of them, so that was a good deal, a real deal. Wow, Diane, you were right to turn down the 850 from Alison. What a cracking result. But have our dealers managed to clock up any profit? <laughs> 10 out of 10 for condition. It's fantastic. They haven't got broken or chipped. David was relieved to pass on the decanter set in the same mint condition, earning a neat profit. Thank you very much for bringing it. And the collection of gold was on the money too, and it was scrapped at a good price. Debbie found a buyer for the gold brooch at a trade fair, netting herself a tidy sum. David wore flying today. So it's chocks away. 
Simon barely had time to let the dust settle before the propeller flew out of the door to a new home. And as for the tea caddy, it caused a stir at a trade fair, proving to be a good little earner. And finally, the character Jug. But there is a profit there, and um, I'm very happy to make a profit if I see it. Well, once a dealer, always a dealer. Hats off to Alison, she certainly knows her stuff. <laughs> It's been a great day here in the sale room. Lots of excitement, lots of bidding, lots of buying. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.